what um, uh, Canto 2, chapter 1, oh. verse number 11. Om Gyan Timiranda Sya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurubina Maha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Tadati Svara Padati Kam Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudamani Pacharya Mani Vrasesa Sunyavadi Vasyatya Dev Satarine Vancha Kalpa Turu Vischa Kripa Sindhu, Pei Bacha Patita, Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnava, Yong Namahona Maha, Jaisi Krishna, Shaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Dwayti Gadar Har, Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So I wanted to, again, occasionally we explore the importance of chanting the holy name, the glories of the holy name, some of the uh, qualifications to improve the chanting of the holy name. And today we'll, we'll explore some of the restrictions that one should avoid in chanting the holy name. Now this verse is very <laughs> much uh, focusing on the restrictions within the purport. Eitan nividyamananam chitam kutubayam yoginam nirpa nirnitam parer namagmukirtanam. Translation, O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord to the ways of great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those are desires of all material enjoyment and those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. So go down the purport quite far. Keep going down. Okay, let's see. Yeah, keep going. Okay, here we go. Okay, right there. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. Srila Jiva Goswami instructs that the chanting of the holy name of the Lord should be done loudly. They should be performed offenselessly as well as recommended in the Padma Purana. One can deliver himself from the effects of all sins by surrendering himself unto the Lord. One can deliver himself from all offenses at the feet of the Lord by taking the shelter of the holy name. One cannot protect himself if one commits an offense at the feet of the holy name of the Lord. Such offenses are mentioned in the Padma Purana as being ten in number. <laughs> the first offense is to vilify the great devotees who have preached about the glories of the Lord. So this is considered to be the mad, it's called the mad elephant offense, Hasti Aparad. Um, it indicates that uh, there are great personalities who dedicate themselves to uh, spreading the glories of the Lord. In other words, spiritual masters and the preachers whose service is to spread the glories of the Lord. And so an offense to such a personality is considered to be a great offense. <laughs> and to vilify, find fault, or criticize unnecessarily, or just criticize these great devotees is, uh, is compared to, it's like if you have a garden and you, you planted a nice uh, seed and you've been watering it, you've been cultivating it, and it's uh, growing and it's starting to show signs of uh, fruit. But then you decide to let an elephant into your garden. And then an elephant is like, he stampedes through the garden and nothing is left. 
So that's considered to be the mad elephant offense or to vilify great devotees who have preached about the glories of the Lord. So one should be careful to avoid this type of mentality or where one finds fault. The second offense is to see the holy names of the Lord in terms of worldly distinction. The Lord is the proprietor of the universe, is therefore he may be known in different places by different names, but that does not in any way qualify the fullness of the Lord. Any nomenclature, this is interesting, which is meant for the Supreme Lord is as holy as the others because they are meant for the Supreme Lord. That means any name of the Lord. Such holy names are as powerful as the Lord himself, and therefore there is no bar for anyone in any part of the creation to chant glorify the Lord by a particular name of the Lord as is, is locally understood. Try to understand that. They are, they are auspicious and one should not distinguish such names as the Lord as material commodities. So we might find there, and as Krishna says in the, our Lord Chaitanya says, Nam Nam Akari Bahudani Jasarvashaktis. There are many names of the Lord. And uh, the names indicate in the personality of Godhead and his qualities, forms, pastimes. So in different places around the world, the Lord is known by different names. And sometimes we connect that to some kind of religious institution or following. But it means basically that wherever there is an authorized, now this is in term has to be clear, that if there's an authorized name of the Lord, no one can make up a name of the Lord. Uh, but there is in the Shastras and many scriptures around the world, there are different names. So one should not... Uh, you know, somehow or other, um, I mean, you should understand the distinction between the Lord and those who are in another position who are also known as Lord. For, for example, we have Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, and then we have Lord Vishnu. So Vishnu is not on the same level as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva are devas. They are functional aspects of the Lord for bringing about creation and for destroying creation. But Vishnu is the maintainer. And we chant the names of Krishna and Vishnu. We don't chant the names of Shiva and Brahma. Although they are demigods, they are... So it says to put these personalities on the same level as the Supreme Lord or above the Supreme Lord. Uh, this is, uh, has occurred in many places, especially in the Indian continent where they see that all the forms of the Lord are all equal. And they don't make distinctions between the expansions of the Lord and the Lord himself. Or even those persons in, so you'll see sometimes people who are accustomed to growing up in India, and they have Ganesh, Shiva, uh, Lakshmi, and various other devas, and they put it all on the same platform. And they say, you know, God is God is many. He's he is many, but he's also one. And that one is the original source of the myth. But in this case, we see that people do not distinguish between the Lord and many times living entities and put it all on the same platform. And particularly Brahman Shiva. Because if you go and read such Puranas as the Shiva Purana and other Puranas, Linga Purana, you'll find that in many of these lesser Puranas, the Puranas that are in the law, that deal with uh, teachings to raise people up from that mode to a higher mode, uh, they also encourage worship of Agni, fire god, or worship of Shiva. But 
who cannot worship. So if they worship something in relationship to the Lord, they move forward because the principle of worship establishes them on a higher platform. But to think that they're on the same level or above the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, is an offense. The third offense is to neglect the orders of the authorized Acharya spiritual masters. So what does that mean? And it means neglect or disobey both. Um, that is to, sometimes they, we, people think, well, there are many instructions of the spiritual master and I can pick and choose things that are relevant for me. But um, the, the, the spiritual master's instructions, his orders are uh, not relative, they're absolute. And so to make that distinction, to follow and not follow according to one's own uh, ideas is also another form of offense. And that offense should be very carefully avoided. So one should uh, make sure that they can follow the instructions of the spiritual and they should incur and they should also ask questions regularly and see if they uh, what they need to do in order to follow the instructions. The fourth fence is to vilify scriptures in pursuant of the Vedic knowledge. There are many scriptures in the world, and although they are not on the same level as the Vedas, or the essence of the Vedas, which is the, the Shrutis, or the, yeah, the Shrutis. And people um, like to vilify, criticize the scripture. Other scriptures may deal with Karma Khan and Jnana Khan and mixed in with their Upasana Kanda, which is devotional service. But they are meant, again, for different classes of people. And one should not take find fault. Srila Prabhupada has indicated in one particular verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam that one who finds fault with other people's scriptures, their minds become disturbed. And because that disturbance is, causes them to uh, become unsteady in their own practice of Krishna consciousness. So one should be very careful for that one. The fifth offense is to find the holy name in terms of mundane calculation. And one should, not, one should understand the holy name to be the Lord and none different from the Lord. Or sometimes we say that one should, uh, you know, not, uh, underestimate the glories of the Lord. Um, the glories of the Lord are always uh, underestimated. So one should not think that there is eulogies or exaggerations when it comes to glorifying the Lord. Sometimes people think, well, and these statements of glorifications of the Lord's holy name are simply to inspire one. They're not a uh, factual, but they're just more or less uh, eulogies. But actually, when it comes down to the essential, the Lord's holy name cannot be understood. Uh, there's no question of, of uh, over glorification. There's only a question of under glorification. The sixth offense is to interpret the holy name. It's not imaginary. And the Lord is, and his name is not imaginary. For people with a poor fund of knowledge, they imagine that his holy name to be imaginary. So um, just like they, sometimes they say, well, um, we're chanting, but we can chant anything. Doesn't matter what you chant, just chant something. You know, you can chant the names of your family members. And because you're chanting that, it's all chanting, therefore it's all the same. Or to, to give a material interpretation, for instance, like the chanting of the holy name is refreshing like a nice bath 
in the morning. Uh, or to use it in comparison to anything material. You know, uh, it, it can't be compared, it can't be interpreted. Krishna's name is Krishna. And the only interpretation we give is that it's non different than Krishna. It is Krishna in sound vibration. So to, uh, to compare it with anything in this material world or anything else, even in the spiritual sense, is, is what is called, uh, it's, uh, we imagine things, we interpret accordingly. Seventh fence is to commit sin because I have the formula here. One can be one who takes advantage of the trend continues to commit sins on expectation of neutralizing the effect is the greatest offender. Such an offender cannot purify himself. In other words, one may be a sinful man before you know about taking chanting, one becomes one should strictly restrain himself from committing sinful activities with the hope that this method of chanting the holy name will give you protection. So we know that the chanting of the holy name that does remove the reactions of sinful activities. But if one has the that I can go on with sinful activities and then chant and therefore get freed from the reaction, that is called nam 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 yasya hi papa buddhi which means it's the most sinful of all papa buddhi papa means sinful buddhi means a, a great great sin um, there are people who think like that there was one devotee in our movement who tried to introduce the, that smoking marijuana and chanting Hare krishna will give you a a more of a powerful effect of the chanting. And he was introducing that and it was also getting a following from that. But Prabhupada, you know, when he found out, he stopped it. And then the devotees said, well, they said, well, at least he's chanting. But Prabhupada said, no, his chanting is offensive. Therefore, he's not getting any benefit from his chanting because he's using it to encourage sinful activities. Uh, the eighth offense is to consider the chanting of the Holy Name to be some material auspicious and ritualistic activities. So similarly, for example, well, I do puja. I do various types of yagyas. I offer my prayers. I... Uh, given charity, I perform so many of these uh, religious activities. So the, uh, the holy name is just one of the many religious activities that I perform. In other words, uh, to put it on the same level of all these karma kanda activities. Therefore think it's, people will say that, well, you know, I'm doing my worship in this way, and you're chanting, that's another way. They're all the same. Yata mata, tata pata. Uh, you do your way, I do my way, and it's all equally as good. But no, the holy name is transcendental to all material situations, all sacrifices, penances, austerity, study of the Vedas, ritualistic performances, all these things are subordinate and elevating, but the holy name of itself is Kali Kali Namarupa Krishna Avatar. It is Krishna himself in sound. Krishna has appeared in the form of his name. His name is non-different than him. So that non-difference cannot be under, understood simply by interpretation or philosophical discussion. It can only be understood through experience. So when we're chanting the names of the Lord, we can get an experience of the presence of Krishna through his name. 
The ninth offense is to instruct those who are not interested in chanting. So sometimes uh, we inadvertently commit this offense in terms of when we speak to large audiences or just a mixed audience in general. We will speak about the glories of the holy name. And there are people who have no faith in the chanting and they're just there listening. But this offense really uh, implies that uh, if you're discussing with an, another person, you're trying to encourage them to chant. Um, if you, uh, if they're unwilling to hear, or if you try to glorify the holy name by discussing the higher uh, benefits of chanting the holy name, like uh, trying to describe associate with Krishna in a particular rasa and then connect that to the holy name. These are offensive types of statements. And if someone is unwilling, then better to not to continue to speak because you're making their life difficult also because trying to help them, you're hurting them because they are feeling negative towards what you're giving and therefore they will not, they will get a reaction for, no, not a reaction, but they will uh, interfere with their progress in Krishna consciousness. In the, uh, in the Christian tradition, they have a particular statement that kind of illustrates the ninth offense. It's, Do not throw one's poor swines. Mm -hmm. So if you throw pearls before a pig, what is he going to do? He's going to step on them or he's going to chew on them. And so he doesn't know what to do with such valuable, uh, you know, gems. So therefore, one should be very discriminating on how to speak to others about the holy name. But you can speak very basically. And if one is resistant, then better not to continue. Then the ninth one is the I me and my principle, false ego, thinking I'm this body and the, whole, the world works under my direction. Think one's the enjoyer, be on the bodily concept of life. And then it's also explained that after I, under so many, hearing so many instructions on the holy names of the Lord, one still remains attached to material activities. So we've gone to so many classes, we've heard so many lectures, we've read so many books, we're practicing Krishna consciousness, but we're still attached to trying to enjoy in the material world. And that becomes a blockade, a block to moving forward in spiritual life. It's an offense to the holy name. So these are seven which is also really important. Sometimes it's called the 11th offense, and that is, it's called offense, which means the offense of inattention. Um, inattention means to, is divided into three categories of itself, uh, vikshepa, aldakshina, and jadya. Vikshepa means to think about material thoughts while one is chanting the holy names of the Lord, making plans. Or just like there was one, uh, this may apply in general, one man, he received some instructions from one uh, spiritual master in our movement. And this man was a businessman. So he said, now I found the formula for making my business even better. I can chant and I get so many ideas. So that's offensive. One should not try to use the holy name to further one's materialistic life. And so when we are chanting, we should try to hear nicely the sound vibration of Krishna's names. And Chanchala Himana Krishna Pramati Balabhadra. And the mind will wonder 
But Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, wherever, wherever the mind wanders due to its unsteady and flickering nature, get back under the control of the self. Um, so this is uh, what is called big shapa, or thinking about material things while you're chanting. Sometimes we think about devotional things. That's not as bad, but it's still... Prabhupada cautions us that the, the chanting really means to keep attention on the sound vibration. And wherever the wine mind wanders, just bring it back. Practice bringing it back as much as it wanders. Don't allow it to wander. Uh, sometimes we, do, we don't even notice, but it wanders away. And then we realize we're not there. But then again, then immediately bring it back. But one of the ways to avoid or not to avoid, but one of the ways to ensure better chanting is to pray to Srila Haridas Thakur, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur has prayed. He says, uh, O Vaishnav Thakur, Srila Haridas Thakur, alone I have no hope to chant the holy names of the Lord Hari. Please be merciful and with a particle of faith, give me the mercy. Give me the treasure of the Lord, of Krishna. So praying that we cannot access attention on our own. And that is also mentioned that by one's own effort, one cannot bring about attentive chanting. One has to pray for attentive chanting. And that will guide one towards just success. Mm -hmm. Another one is Antakshina, laziness and indifference, lackadaisicalness. I'm chanting, but I'm really not even listening. I'm just thinking, when is it over? Oh, no, there's no enthusiasm. I think I'm hearing, but I'm not really hearing. It's just going on. So it's similar to inattention of subject, but it really means a lack of enthusiasm. We should be enthusiastic to chant the holy name. We should be grateful for the opportunity to chant the holy name. And we should apply all our attention and as much devotion as we can in chanting the holy name. And the last one is uh, Jadya. Jadya means sleep. If one is too sleepy, when one's chanting the holy names of the Lord. And Prabhupada said one can walk around. It becomes a little more difficult to hear when you're walking around because your mind may also be distracted easier. But then again, we try to look at the ground while we're walking so we're not distracted to the by the environment. And uh, if one becomes too tired or too overwhelmed with the mood of sleep, then one should uh, take rest and chant when one is more rested. Mm -hmm. But try to avoid that sleepiness. It happens a lot of times to devotees, especially when we first get up, we may still be a little tired when we get up. And because of that, we have a tendency to be inattentive or sleepy. So these are the 10 plus 1, 11th offense. Now, Bhakti Vinod Thakur cautions us to follow strictly the 11th offense. He says, by doing that, one will the one will gain the tendency to avoid the other ten offenses. Mm -hmm. So if we're not practicing attentive chanting, then it becomes more likely one will fall into committing the other ten offenses, one or more of them. So attentive chanting is really the focus of our Krishna consciousness. Okay, so I'll stop there and open it up for discussion. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. Thank you. I request devotees, if there are any questions, comments, realization, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Uh, 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Very well. Maharaj, thank you for this uh, nice explanation and uh, especially around uh, the, second, the third bullet point around uh, comparing the names with equal to or unequal to Lord, equal to or greater than Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. Um, Maharaj, I have one question which I am still not clear about. So I hope that we can, I, I, I will get a clarification. Maharaj, when somebody worships somebody, oh, sorry, sorry. When a person or a sect worships a person and call themselves Narayan, uh, they are still uttering the names of word Narayan. They still do the, the bead bags and they chant Narayan, Narayan. What is the destination of such people? And is that an offensive chanting because they are making an offense? But then equally on the other side, you know, the Lord's name is all powerful. So how, how, how do I see this? <laughs> the person is obviously not in Orion, but they're chanting Orion. Is that the indication? Yes, Maharaj, yes. Or, or, or they would worship a deity whom they call Narayan, but they are actually a person. It's not Vishnu Tattva. Oh, well, Narayan is Vishnu Tattva. <laughs> He's uh, Narayan Tattva. <laughs> uh, he is the complete personality of the Godhead. He's he is the Lord of the Vaikuta realms. Um, this is, this is, because if they're doing it consciously, then it's offense. But if they're doing it out of ignorance, it's not so offensive, but they should be corrected. And one has to know the nature of the Lord. That's why we instruct people about the not, not only the chanting of the name, but what it means to chant the name, who's, what the name is, and who is the, what is the qualities that are connected with the name. So therefore, you can't separate Krishna from his name. You can't separate Krishna from his qualities. You can't separate Krishna from his forms. You can't separate Krishna from his pastimes, nor can you separate the name from the qualities, the name from the forms, the name from the pastimes either. They're all absolute one, but different in, uh, in the aspect of the, uh, the absolute truth. So the oneness is where we're focusing on. Therefore, people should be instructed to chant the name of the Lord with the intention to glorify the Lord, to please the Lord, to purify themselves. But obviously, even if they're chanting ignorantly, or there is something, and Prabhupada said, if they continue to go on chanting, then gradually they'll start to uh, purify themselves. They're awakened and they'll be able to understand what it means to glorify the Lord in a, in, with proper consciousness and not just, you know. Well, you know, we have the example of Ajameel. Although Ajameel chanted the holy name of Narayan offenselessly, uh, he was still chanting in Namabas. He wasn't chanting in Sudanam because. His intention was not to glorify the Lord. His intention was to call his son. But he remembered the Lord when he called the Lord's name, and therefore he got liberation or he got freedom from all his sinful reactions. But still, he, was, he still had to spend more time before he could actually reach perfection. Therefore, he went to hardware, finished his life out, and then at the end of life, he went back to Godhead. So the holy name, when you chant with the proper consciousness, then it has much more effects. But if you chant Namabas, it still has it still has effect. Mm -hmm. no, no doubt, because it's the name. The example is Ajamio. Mm -hmm. 
So they're chanting Namavas maybe. Or, you know, chanting unknowingly is also another form of Namavas. It's not Namapara, it's Namavas. Thank you, Maharaj. That you don't look like you're convinced. <laughs> no, I'm thinking, Maharaj. I'm thinking then, if they if they start to worship a person, a human being, um, as Narayan, and they chant the names, their obviously consciousness is towards that person, not towards the name. Uh, oh, to if, chant, if they think a person is Narayan, oh, yes, Maharaj. Oh, no. uh, yeah, that's uh, that's offensive. To relegate Narayan to an ordinary human being is, another, is a form of an offense. They get very little or any benefit. They will never be able to progress beyond. They may be able to free themselves from, from material suffering, but that's as much as they'll get out of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mahara, so that is, that is what I was thinking. Uh, or my little brain as to the yeah the Maya bodies also think like that that a personality is has manifested himself and therefore all living entities are the supreme lord so they address each other the Maya bodies uh, on the moon Orion. Orion is the supreme personality of Godhead, and he's not an ordinary living being who's come to the material world. This is clear, Maharaj. Thank you. It's clarified. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, they make very little of any, any benefit. They should be corrected. Where in the Shastras does it say that this person is Narayan? That's what Prabhupada would always indicate. You have to show Shastric evidence that the person you think is the Supreme Lord, incarnation of the Lord, is actually mentioned. If they're not mentioned in the Shastras, then they're not authorized. Just like we understand that the Kalki avatar will come, and he's a Vishnu manifestation. But what does it say in the in the Kalki Purana and in also other places? He will appear in a certain place, Shambhala, and he will have a particular father whose name his father's name would be uh, Vishnu Jos Josi. Uh, so, you know, everything is there describing the future incarnations and the ones in the past also. So a person has to line up with that in order to become authorized. So there's where we catch them. Where in the Shastras does it say it? And they can't create their own Shastras. It has to be eternal shastras, not something man-made. Thank you, Maharaj. It's clear now. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Sudha, Sudha. Uh, yeah, Hare Krishna, uh, Dada Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the very nice class. Um, uh, I have a couple of questions, Guru Maharaj, like regarding uh, ninth offense to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. So does this also apply uh, to like when distributing books? like especially Bhagavatam? Well, in the sense that you don't really 
try to eulogize the holy name. We might even tell, we say, we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, mm -hmm. and you can, uh, you know, you can be, ha you can be happy. This will make you happy. But you get into glorifying the esoteric uh, benefits of the holy name, then that becomes somewhat offensive. Then keep it simple. If you chant, you'll be happy. You can all say you'd be chant, you'd be free from distress. Like that. Okay. Keep it simple. And uh, Guru Maharaj, when it uh, comes to distributing books um, uh, to the people, um, like let's say I want to give Bhagavatam books um, uh, to my cousins and uh, they are not like a vegetarian. So is it okay? I mean, if they are interested, can I still give them or it's... Um... Well, if they're not interested, if you can make them interested, yeah, but if they're not interested, don't push it. Okay. okay. You know, your preaching is supposed to make them interested. <laughs> okay. If you can say things to interest them, mm -hmm. that is called preaching. But if they're, you know, reluctant, no matter what you do, then better to just give for shadam. Mm -hmm. Okay, good Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, like uh, regarding chanting Guru Maharaj, I try to chant, but I can't sit continuously and chant. So I try to walk and chant. Is yeah, that's that... so if they say it's a little more difficult to keep attention because there is up and you have to maneuver yourself while you're walking. So try to find a, a place where you can walk nicely, where there's no distraction, obstacles, or, uh, yeah. And uh, generally, we, we say, uh, when you're walking, look at the floor. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's nothing to see down there. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, good much. And because uh, sometimes what I notice, like uh, with, while chanting also, um, usually some days it's very good, but some days like um, when I like uh, close my eye, I usually um, um, like think about like something in the past and it's very hard for me, no matter what I try. Um, when I, 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 I do chanting, but those things like will keep coming in the mind and it's, I feel like very hard uh, to concentrate. Yeah, and yeah to just because... Become a little strong with your mind. Push it out. Tell your mind to, mm -hmm. in a very strong way, to, to not bother you. Uh, pray to the Lord. Pray to the, pray to uh, the pure devotees to give you the strength to chant attentively. Uh, you have to make a concerted effort when it comes to that. It may take a little bit of an effort and may take continual effort. But uh, never allow it to stay because when it stays, it grows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So prayers, uh, Guru Maharaj. So prayers are very prayers before, prayers during, prayers after. Mm -hmm. I think I sent a whole bunch of prayers to the devotees. You also can pray to the beads too. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is I'll repost these prayers on the mm -hmm. conference and you can find them there. Oh, okay, very much in the group, okay. Yeah, you on the conference? Oh, in the WhatsApp group, Guru Maharaj? On Chandra Mali Swami conference. Oh, uh, no, Guru Maharaj, I'm sorry. Um, hmm. Maybe Lani, check with her if she can. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I'll send them to you directly. And then we can put you on the conference if you want. Uh, yes. Yeah, and then you can get regular updates on everything, not just, you know, occasionally. Mm -hmm. Okay, very much. I'll check with Lavanya Mataji if she can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I'll do is I'll send you these prayers directly on your email. Okay, good much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Uh,
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is uh, ninth offenses until ninth. We, I feel like it's easy. Uh, of course, like, uh, but the tenth one, it looks like definitely uh, I'm offending because it's saying uh, not to maintain material at attachments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. So how to, like, yes, like it's with continuous chanting, uh, things are changing, like the way it used to be versus now, at least understanding of material attachments and how should uh, we move or ch should detach from these things at some point of time. But it's a gradual process. We have to say every material world is, is, is Krishna's energy. And uh, we can take what we need in order to carry and soul together and use what we can in the service of the Lord. So nothing belongs to us, nor is material just the source of Krishna said Bhagavad Gita. Yehi samsparsada boga dukha yono yevate avanta vanta kunta yadishura mute ga. And that the objects of sense objects, senses are not the source of happiness, they're actually the source of the So, he thinks that Krishna consciousness is not attachment, but trying to think this is attachment. The only service and not so much in the object that they are serving with. We have to develop our attachment to Krishna and then it becomes natural to, do, to detach ourselves from everything material. It's a process. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I, I, I feel like Krishna. sometimes when yeah, sorry, Guru Maharaj. I was saying like sometimes I feel that uh, uh, now uh, in any close family member or anybody uh, in circle, if uh, even if I'm not doing anything wrong, but they feel sometimes wrong. Uh, so take that input but also feel inside that maybe Krishna is trying to give this message that nothing belongs to us. Nothing, not nothing belongs, but uh, uh, it, there is only Krishna who is the real friend. Rest all is just like... Yeah. That's true. The more you get attached to Krishna, the more you become detached from all these other things. Because these other things can't give you any, any pleasure. They can keep you busy, and sometimes people think by being busy, I'm happy, but busyness is not happiness. Happiness is the nature of the soul's relationship with the Supreme Lord. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare yeah, uh, Bhakti Vinota, of course, is Manaso Deho Geho. You'll get you more Arpilu to Alpade Nanda Kishore. Uh, he says, my home, my family, my possessions, uh, my very body, it belongs to you. So everything belongs to Krishna. We interact with these personalities called family members, and you may use things to maintain your livelihood in this world, but not all of it belongs to Krishna. And if it's if you know, if you learn how to, how to use these in Krishna's service, then that's that's Krishna consciousness. If you find pleasure in using it, that's not material. But if you're trying to find pleasure in things, then that's material.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Lavanya Mataji and Sri Devi Mataji have raised hand. Lavanya. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila mm -hmm. Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you again for reminding us about the importance of chanting attentively which is uh, definitely very challenging for us in this age of Kali with so many distractions and so many uh, anomalies of this age. So again, this reminder to chant attentively is very timely, Guru Mara. Thank you for that. Um, my question is on this uh, chanting, people chant so many mantras. If you go to yoga studios, they chant Om Namah Shivaya, they chant Hare Krishna, they chant so many different mantras. Uh, will we be offensive if we encourage them to focus on the Maha Mantra uh, by explaining um, the glories of the Supreme Lord. Uh, like, is that an offense to the holy name or we should encourage them by telling them the truth? No, in those settings, you can get into, you just let them have the experience of, ch of chanting the holy name. That will transform them. Not so much you have to preach about that. In those environments, you, the only preaching is uh, that you can uh, say that this form of it's mantra yoga. So you get the yogi, yogic language and you expect that with the process of chanting. Uh, you're not giving, if you speak any in those places, you can find you in some kind of mercy. But it always remains and pushed out of the global chanting, the bits of chanting. That's all. I don't speak about not, don't chant this mantra, or this is the, you know, just, that's not for that. Yoga Studios is a give them an ex by having this kirtan. It's their experience that's going to change them and transform them. We usually don't do philosophy in yoga places. <laughs> okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. I'm going to share your path. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question like um, with the ninth offense, like um, we should not uh, uh, preach uh, to the non-devotees about the glories of the holy name. So, uh, but, uh, but when we try to, uh, how do we, then how we have to give that holy name to the non-devotees, Guru Maharaj? Um, yeah, you just keep it simple. Mm. Keep it simple. Tell them that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will make you feel happy. Chanting of the Holy uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the way to glorify the Lord in this age. Mm. You just keep it simple. What that means, the glories of the Holy Name, is they don't talk about you know entering into the spiritual world, getting into your rasa, yeah. you know, these things we don't talk about. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, keep it basic. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to speak to you about one thing, but maybe right after our, yes, our session here, I can I can go on your phone. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sure. It'll be just for like two minutes. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Maharaj. Oh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Rupal. Uh, my question is: uh, uh, If a female is bold by nature. 
bold as in not just uh, in in the physical context but maybe by speech with her firmness of mind or carrying out things like that is it a good quality or a bad quality um the feminine nature if it becomes harsh it becomes very uh difficult women should always be soft and sweet and that's their that's their quality if they become harsh or they try to imitate men it doesn't really go so well so a boldness is basically imitating men is it like that it can be bold but it should still have that element of sweetness feminine charm feminine uh eloquence women can speak nicely but if they become harsh in their harsh you know what i mean by harsh right mm. okay. harsh means rough when females mm. become rough in their speech everybody runs <laughs> <laughs> okay they shouldn't be rough and they can get the same benefit in whatever way they're speaking if they speak pleasingly they may also speak be bold but it should also be pleasing okay bold but pleasing that's yeah nice. when a man becomes a little strong people think it but when a woman becomes strong you know nobody likes it <laughs> it's just the women right. it's just against it's against the feminine nature that's all but sometimes maraj we notice some female they are naturally having that element and uh is it possible that they could utilize it in krishna consciousness in any way i just keep <laughs> even if they speaking something you don't if it's done slowly it's nice it's it's in other words it'll have uh people will be receptive to 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 some degree mm-hmm. satyam priyam satyam bruyam speak the truth in a very sweet and palatable way right okay okay so basically it should be palatable whatever it if it if it is boldness or submissiveness anything but it should be palatable at least yeah. for a female i'm using that word sweet over and over because that's the word keep it sweet mm-hmm. right man okay thank you maharaj thank you with the nature of a woman is she she sweet and when she deviates from her nature she becomes uh, very becomes very unattractive mm-hmm. is arguing was but she should be sweet <laughs> right okay she should she should not argue but if she does keep it sweet <laughs> <laughs> okay the better is not arguing not argue say that again the better thing is not arguing that's the best yes. but that's a whole other subject <laughs> <laughs> okay yes thank you yes thank you okay i have no, i have another class immediately so i have to end this class so i have a, a group waiting for me right now so thank you
and we'll all tomorrow. Prabhupada. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your time and association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much.